What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, it sucks. One, the leaves are falling like crazy, and they're driving me crazy because I've actually blown the leaves off twice out here today. I've done the front yard and the backyard here you know, yesterday and today, and they're still falling like crazy. It's like, could all you just fall, like, right now? I got a damn maple tree in the front that always, it's always the last one to go ahead and drop them. And it, it, it it's literally like it's it's just with me. Anyway, tomorrow the Cowboys are off. I don't know what your plans are, if you've got the honeydew list and all that. I didn't tell my wife that the Cowboys are off. She'll probably have me. Oh, Cowboys aren't playing? Let's do the honeydew list. Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. We still going to be live streaming tomorrow. There's actually some really key games that are going to be going on. And one, actually, surprisingly, we made fun of the Commanders. The Commanders. But, you know, I hate to say it, but since we started playing that song, Washington has gone on a three-game win streak. I gotta stop playing that thing. But here, here's my problem because you have the Commanders tomorrow against the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings, who have only got one loss, which was to the Eagles, and are leading their division big time, surprisingly, over the Green Bay Packers. Washington, who are now four and four, if they find a way to beat Kurt Frickin' Cousins, and of course there's the whole storyline right there of Kirk Cousins, you know, having been one of the few success stories at quarterback for the Washington Commanders, or it's going to be after leaving the Washington Commanders, because usually quarterbacks don't get out alive. Um, we don't know if the Minnesota Vikings that are 6-1 and one are really real or not. We don't. And right now, with, High, uh, with uh, Tyler Heineke under center, it's not pretty. You know, I'm nicknamed Eyebrows. You know, once you see it, you can never unsee it. Because every time I see him with that helmet on, he looks like Meet the Millers. Eyebrows. In fact, I think I will unload that clip just so we can have it <laughs> for for the game tomorrow. But we're going to be live streaming tomorrow. Uh, Rio will be at the game and stuff. They're actually going to be in a luxury suite, like with 20 of those guys and stuff. And here's the thing. You know, since Dan Snyder has announced or, or basically is checking into potential buyers. We've heard about, you know, people left and right that may be interested from Byron Allen, you know, uh, media mogul, uh, hearing about Jay-Z along with Jeff Bezos. Hell, RG3 said, hey, you know, he got 400000 to become a minority part owner uh, with his group and stuff and wants to take 10 fans with them. This bears watching. This might be the change that the commanders have needed like the black clouds are parting dan snyder who probably had all of the nfl owners literally go to him and say we have the votes to vote you out and take your team you can either do it that way or you can go out on your own accord and get the most money that you can for the stadium and for the team and probably that's what the happening is Dan Snyder understands that Maryland, Virginia, and D.C., none of them are going to give him any money to help build the stadium. They're just not. That he'd have to flip the bill to build it, kind of like Jack Kent Cook did, which is one of the reasons why that stadium is a dump. He built it on the cheap and built it on a hurry because D.C. wouldn't play with him to build it in D.C., and he moved all around because nobody wanted to help him build it. And so he built it with his own money. I can at least give him credit for that. But it was a dump and outdated when it was built. And here it is. It's almost 30 years later. It's, it's passed by. But the commanders, for salute to service, they painted the end zones black, the lettering on the fields black. They're going to be wearing their black church, uh, uniforms, um, which will be a kind of a cool look for them. But I dare say that this may be the motivation for that team to change. Because if they beat Minnesota, they beat Minnesota, 
all of a sudden everything changes. They're sitting there at the eighth spot right now. Basically a tiebreaker away from being in the playoff race seat. 49ers. So if you don't think that that game is not important, it is. And with the NFL, the thing that's crazy is things can turn around quickly. And the Eagles, they've had their way with everything. You know, they've they've gotten a soft schedule. They've gotten some really good players. And, and don't get me wrong, Eagle fans. I'm not saying that you guys aren't a good team. You really are a good team. I'm not taking that away. I'm not diminishing what you've done. You have beaten the teams that are in front of you. And when I talk about you guys and things, it's not about trying to be a homer against you. It's actually just kind of pointing out things that are legitimate. And, you know, you guys get butt hurt because we say, sorry, when you're playing the Jaguars and you're playing the Lions, you know, when you're playing the Texans, nobody thinks that that's the cream of the crop. I'm not saying that the Cowboys have, although I will take playing the Bengals, I'll say the Giants, and I'll take the Rams over those guys. It's not about trying to dismiss you, but it's about trying to look ahead and say, where are the road bumps for those guys? Where are our opportunities to gain some ground? Where will we all be come the end of the season? And if you think that the Washington Commanders are out of it, Dude, they ain't. This is going to get interesting as we go through because we have the circular firing squad that is the NFC East. Eagles, you know you always have problems with the Giants. Washington, well, even the Washington COVIDs last year gave you Eagles a game. You didn't blow them out when they had a, a uh, practice squad player from New England there and 21 players on the field. <clears throat> Although, Dak has pretty much owned the division. So, we'll see what we're going to see. I've got my live stream here in a few minutes, but watch the Commanders. That game is going to be key tomorrow, um, as well as the Rams versus Tampa Bay. That is the get-off-the-mat game, because both of those teams have three wins. Um, if Tampa Bay goes to three and six... It's going to be hard to get back uh, into this thing. and Or if the Rams go 3-5, and five, it's going to be hard for them to get back into this thing too. So there's a lot of key games tomorrow that bear watching and a chance for us to look at the conference. So join in tomorrow for our live stream. And I'll see you there. Peace.